Clifton Hicks and Steve Casey were privates for C Troop of the 1st Squadron of the 1st U.S. Cavalry Regiment in the Abu Ghraib neighborhood. My name is Clifton Hicks. This is uh, Steve Casey to my left here. We were both uh, privates in C Troop of the 1st Squadron of the 1st U.S. Cavalry Regiment. Uh, first item, April 2004, free fire zone in the Abu Ghraib neighborhood of Baghdad. During Operation Blackjack, my troop was specifically instructed by our troop commander, a captain, that a particular sector we were moving to recon and force was now considered a free fire zone. I specifically recall him telling us that there were, quote, no friendlies in the area. And then he specifically said, quote, game on, all weapons free. Now, it's important to understand uh, these are not unusual orders. Uh, these are not even unnecessary orders. And, and uh, the nature of war, and this particular war, uh, these, are, these are necessary whenever a situation gets unusually dangerous or confused, which happens quite often, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, upon arrival in the area, we found the streets, uh, you know, besides being littered with wreckage of, uh, you know, vehicles, who knows if it's a civilian vehicle or an enemy vehicle, there's no way to tell, uh, but wreckage of vehicles, uh, there wasn't a single building in this neighborhood that hadn't had a hole shot through it or uh, something explode inside of it. This place was totally destroyed. Uh, the streets were littered with numerous human and animal corpses, uh, not just men, uh, but all manner of humanity. Uh, I personally saw no military gear or weapons of any kind on any of the bodies that I came across. I personally did not fire my weapon on this operation, but I do know that other members of my unit embraced the weapons-free order by firing, for example, <laughs> by firing indiscriminately into occupied civilian vehicles and its civilians themselves, using both personal weapons such as rifles and uh, cruiser vehicle-mounted weapons such as machine guns, uh, coaxial machine guns of various caliber. I'm Stephen Casey. Um, I was in the same unit as Cliff. We went to uh, the city where we were supposed to secure and patrol. Uh, one of the first thing that I noticed is that the uh, several buildings had been bulldozed by American engineering companies um, to and it flattened and piled everything from rubble and vehicles up on the side of the road and set them ablaze and uh, that 's how they cleaned up the area and weeded out the bad guys uh, and we were sort of a cleanup crew after that um, and we uh, I witnessed several uh, different occurrences where people took advantage of the, th the free fire order. Um, specifically, um, over 20 different uh, vehicles were disabled. I witnessed um, personal weapons being fired into the radiators and windshields due to the fact that these vehicles were coming up the correct side of the road that we were going down the wrong way. Um, our orders at this point in time were to have one vehicle on each side of the highway and ensure there was no one on the highway that, besides us. So, with all the hand waving you can really do from a vehicle, and those who didn't turn around, uh, unfortunately, were um, neutralized one way or another. Either the vehicle, there were shots fired into the windshields, the radiators. It was later estimated, later reported to us by our platoon leader. We, me, Steve and I were in separate platoons. He was a scout, I was a tanker. But my platoon leader later reported to me uh, that some whiz kid somewhere had estimated that between seven to eight hundred enemy had been killed on that operation. And uh, as you just heard, and I'll, I'll agree to that, and, and I'll agree to swear to that to the day I die, I didn't see one enemy on that operation, but seven to eight hundred of them got killed. Uh, judging from what I saw on the ground, I'm willing to swear under oath in all honesty that while many enemy combatants were in fact killed, the majority of those so-called KIAs were in fact civilians attempting to flee the battlefield. I'd like to bring up something that uh, Lord Hill here has brought up earlier, and that is the, uh, the raids and the, and the way the raids are conducted, and uh, usually the, uh, what we find, what, uh, what happens to, uh, to go on at the raids, and typically, um, in many, many instances, it is what the military calls a dry hole, or whoops. Um, Several times this happened. Specifically, I have one event I would like to talk about, and I'll provi uh, be providing uh, some video evidence. Uh, it's sort of a truncated version of, of, the, of the raid, uh, but you can get the gist. Um, 
We have just a, a typical night raid. Um, it was uh, my platoon, a couple Bradleys. Um, we rolled uh, out to this this house, and uh, the procedure for getting into the gate, because typically there were con concrete gate, uh, walls with uh, metal gates uh, closed and secured. So we would pivot steer the Bradleys into the walls to knock down the wall and tear down the infrastructure, the, whatever security infrastructure the, the person's home had, uh, sometimes even crushing the vehicles parked right behind it because uh, you can't see over it. Um, after doing that, uh, we drop the ramp and uh, continue inside. Um, we go to the, uh, uh, the right door, which happens to be the wrong door. You can't get in the house for this door. There's actually uh, there's a deep freeze behind the house. So in all this chaos, everyone's screaming uh, we, and trying to find another way to get in. We go through the front door. Uh, and then we start hearing a lady screaming from the inside, uh, her and her children. Uh, ask, and we get to the door and bust the door in and take her and her children to what we call the EPW Roundup area, which is where a couple lower enlisted soldiers would take the enemy prisoners of war, like this lady and her children, at gunpoint and hold them until the raid was complete. Um, so moving on through there, we, we entered their house and destroyed it. We rummaged through her personal effects that touched things no one should ever um, probably touch, looking for weapons, um, puncturing the walls, looking for soft spots. That was the new thing at the point in time that they were putting things in the walls. So that was our order. Um, so I guess to make this a long story short, um, we destroy this lady's house and we find nothing. We've, we've scared her to death and her children, we were off by a number. It was the house across the street, so. Um, and we didn't go, this is the really, I mean, at the time I actually say, hey, we've got time, why don't we go? Um, however, we didn't go, we chalked it up, and as he says, Charlie Mike went home and maybe went to bed.